Hi everyone and welcome to this brand new session of International Tax Academy. Today we are going to discuss something very interesting and very important for all TP fans, TP lovers and TP aficionados, I being one of them. Now for the last several months or so, the whole of the international tax community, especially on LinkedIn is completely preoccupied with discussions pertaining to different aspects of uh, Pillar 2, Globe. IIR, UTPR, STTR, UDMTT and so on and so forth. However, today we are not going to, we are not going to discuss uh, Pillar 2. In fact, we are going to discuss something about Pillar 1. Because amidst all this din of Pillar 2, OECD had come out with a document, a public consultation document on 8th of December last year. And this document, uh, this one. So this document is public consultation document pillar 1 amount B. It was released on 8th of December 2022 and the consultations were open till 25th of January that is last month. So this document henceforth it's just a public consultation document but I'm, but I'm going to refer to this document in this video as simply the document. So this document pertains to Pillar 1. Pillar 1 as all of us would definitely know, Pillar 1 consists of two components that is amount A and amount B. So Pillar 1 consists of amount A and amount B. Right? Amount A, this is beyond ALP. ALP is not applicable upon amount A. Please be mindful of this fact that this is beyond ALP. Beyond ALP. Beyond ALP, beyond the fold, beyond the ambit of TP. But this amount B is very much within the scope of arm's length principle. And that is why I said that whatever we are going to discuss today, this is going to be of very, very much importance and interest to all the TP lovers. Why? Because amount B which is the component of pillar 1 is very much within the ambit of arm's length principle. So without further, without much ado, let's get started. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to break Today's, I'm going to divide today's video into four components. The first one, in the first, first part, I'll give you the background leading up to the release of this document, background. Second, we'll move over to the objective of amount B, objective of amount B. Third, we'll discuss the design elements design elements or the structure of the public consultation document design elements or the structure structure of the document of document and fourth we'll have a small discussion on the concerns concerns or challenges but challenges would be a very very strong word so let's keep it the way it is concerns <clears throat> concerns of the OECD concerns of the inclusive framework regarding amount B. Fine. So this is the agenda for today's today's video. Fine. Background, objective of amount B, design elements, structure of the document, and then concerns. Fine. Let's move. Let's take up the background. The first. Okay, the background, background of amount B, background of the release of this document, that is the events leading up to the background, that is the events that have led to the release, that have led up to the release of this document. Okay, so document is released on 
8th of December 2022. Let's move backward. Let's move backward. 8th of October. I'll write certain dates. 8th of October 2021. 14th of October 2020. And then November 2019. November 2019 was uh, was the I don't remember the exact date, but then in November 2019, OECD released the Secretariat proposal for a unified approach on Pillar 1. And it was here in this document, the Secretariat approach, the unified proposal for Pillar 1. It was first of all in this document that Pillar 1 was pillar one was divided into amount a amount b and amount c for the first time right turn one year you reach 14th october 2020 in this in i mean on, on this date oecd had released number of blueprints blueprint for amount for pillar one blueprint blueprint for pillar two and so on and so forth now blueprint for pillar one the blueprints that mentioned amount B amount B as something that would streamline the pricing streamline the process of pricing of baseline marketing and distribution activities I again repeat in this blueprint which was released on 14th of October 2020 amount B was hypothesized as something which would streamline the price process of pricing of baseline marketing and distribution activities. Streamline the process of pricing of baseline marketing and distribution activities. Right? <clears throat> Turn one more year and then you reach 8th of October 2021. The inclusive framework, the inclusive framework framework adopts the statement. Up adopt the statement which agrees to a two pillar solution which agrees to a two pillar solution for addressing the challenges arising out of digitalization of the economy and in this two pillar solution pillar one amount a amount b c is taken out c is nowhere to be seen in fact c was also not seen in the blueprint c was just mentioned in this unified proposal so in this statement amount a beyond ELP, amount B very much than ELP and then the statement gave an objective for amount B, gave an objective or the mandate for amount B. What was that objective? That objective has been mentioned very very clearly, that has been mentioned and that has been described very very clearly and in fact that objective, that mandate forms the basis of this document. Fine. So what is that objective that will lead us to the second part of this presentation. Fine. So this is the background. Let us move on to the second part that is objective of the document. Right. Okay. So the objective, very interesting. So the objective, objective, what is objective? Objective, objective is, objective of amount B is to simplify and Streamline, simplify and streamline the pricing of in country, in country baseline marketing and distribution activities. So that the results so 
so that the results are consistent with arm's length principle for all in scope controlled transactions i just name one star point needs of lcj that is low capacity jurisdictions so let us look at the objective because this objective ultimately leads to the design elements or the structure so the objective that was that was an expression of the mandate given in the if statement of 8th of october 2021 the objective of this consultation document amount b is to simplify the objective amount b is to simplify and streamline the pricing of simplify and streamline the pricing of in country baseline marketing and distribution activities so that the results are consistent with the arms length principle for for what transaction for all in scope control transactions keeping in mind the needs of low capacity jurisdictions lcjs right so if you understand this objective if you understand this objective you would understand the entire entire 53 page document fine so this was the objective okay so let us move let us let us move to the next part wherein we will we'll discuss the, uh, the 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 structure or the design elements of this document fine right? and you will see shortly that the design elements and the structure of this document they are directly they are directly derived from the objective fine right? because understand keep this keep this in your mind that amount b have, amount b is very much within the scope of arms and principle amount a is not it is beyond alp and both these amount a and amount b they are the parts of pillar 1 please give this in mind fine okay so objective and then the next part would be for the design elements fine right? design elements design elements design elements or the structure 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 of amount b i should not write structure of amount b structure of the document structure of the document structure of the document public consultation document fine the structure of the document scope of amount b scope of amount b see this in scope right scope of amount b second part is pricing methodology pricing methodology for amount b pricing right see how the components of the objectives are being correlated with the design elements scope pricing and the third part would be the implementation the implementation framework implementation framework implementation framework right so let us have a discussion on these two elements these two elements as far as the scope of mont b as far as the scope of mont b is concerned oecd in the public consultation document they have stated very clearly that all the transactions all the transactions which would be uh, ultimately under the scope of amount b they have to be first of all identified and for the for the identification of those transactions for the ident identification of those control transactions they would make use of various criteria what are those criteria those criteria would be quantitative as well as qualitative so scope of amount b the scoping would be done with the help of qualitative as well as quantitative criteria so you have qualitative as well as quantitative criteria quantitative qualitative and quantitative criteria scope of amount b right now 
in the second video that I'll, that I'll make, I'll discuss scope of Mount B in much greater details. But let me today give you just the structure of this entire document. Fine. So scope of Mount B that would take care of scope, which transactions are within the scope that would be taken care of by the quantitative as well as qualitative criteria. Fine. Pricing methodology that is very very important because understand what was the objective. The objective was to simplify and streamline the pricing, the pricing of in-country baseline marketing and distribution activities. So pricing methodology for amount B becomes very very important. <clears throat> In this context, the document says that the pricing, what are the, 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 the components which are being discussed within pricing methodology, they include the relevant benchmarking criteria. So relevant benchmarking criteria, relevant benchmarking criteria, you have net profit indicators and then you have comparability adjustments you have comparability adjustment so all these three components relative relevant benchmarking criteria net profit indicators and comparability adjustments they are being discussed within the framework of pricing methodology of <coughs> amount b now oecd very very clearly uh, acknowledges in this document that the discussions pertaining to pricing methodology they have moved to a very very <coughs> advanced stage and that TNMM transactional net margin method would be in all probability is the preferred methodology method TP method for pricing of pricing of the in scope transactions however there are two exemptions which are <coughs> also being discussed first of all wherever you have local market comparables you would not use this methodology and wherever you would have uh, um, another method which is the most appropriate method that would be used and not the amount B pricing methodology. So again the I would discuss pricing methodology for this amount B in another video so that would be a part of the later video fine. Okay so scope of amount B separate video in discussion in detail pricing methodology separate video in discussion for discussion in detail right. So today just the structure. <coughs> As far as the implementation framework is concerned, OECD is saying that uh, how do they propose to implement this amount B? They plan to implement this amount B by including this. I mean, the, again, there are different options which are being discussed. So one of the options being discussed is that they would have what? They would have, uh, they would include this entire amount B guidance as a part of the OECD transferring guidelines. Then they are also saying that this could be one of the options that this entire uh, amount B uh, discussion guidance could be made even optional. They are also discussing that this could be included as a part of safe harbor. This could also be included as an interpretation of arms length principle, how ALP would be applied to the baseline marketing and distribution activities. So as far as the implementation framework is concerned, a uh, lot of things are going to be discussed. But then one thing this document mentions very, very clearly that scoping pricing and implementation there are there are substantial linkages between these three elements because this would be influenced by this this would be influenced by this fine so this is in short in very short the design elements or the structure of the document of uh, for the amount for the for the <coughs> amount b pillar one fine so this completes the third aspect of our presentation or discussion the last would be the concerns oh yes the concerns pertaining to this entire document concerns pertaining to amount B remember I had concerns or challenges the first challenge obviously is the objective should be realized objective is to simplify and streamline the pricing of the in scope baseline market and distribution activities for all the control transactions so that the results are consistent with the arms length principle. The first concern is that the arms length principle should be followed. ALP should be adhered to. ALP should be adhered. Should be adhered. Adhered to. This is the first concern. Second concern is consistent application. Consistent application among all the inclusive framework if if countries consistent application why because there are 135 plus countries in the inclusive framework and they have different legal systems so 
OECD is, is quite concerned that the amount B guidance should be as consistently applied across all these jurisdictions. So consistent application, this is one of the very important concerns. Third is special needs of LCJs, special needs of LCJs, low, low capacity, special needs of LCJs. Special needs of LCJs, low capacity jurisdictions. Now, low capacity jurisdictions, they have they have very clearly voiced their concern that many a time there are there is an insufficient availability of relevant or suitable comparables for application of arm's length principle for pricing of these baseline marketing and distribution activities, these control transactions. So I mean they they they, they say that they lack relevant or reliable comparables by which arm's length prices can be established. So what OECD is saying that the amount B pricing methodology would make use of such basis that would create that would create a pricing methodology that would alleviate this concern and that would enable the low capacity jurisdictions to apply apply whatever comparables whatever comparables from wherever they get i mean the comparables would not be geographically constrained and whether the comparables are from their jurisdiction or either from another jurisdiction so oecd is saying that they'll create a basis by which this geographical limitation would be overcome and these lcjs would be able to apply the comparables in a reliable manner right so these are the concerns that are being discussed at this point of time well this was the this was the agenda for today's short video in the next video and then after that i'll discuss in detail because scoping becomes very very important because ultimately all the in scope transactions ultimately these in scope transactions will be priced fine so in the second video i'll discuss what is the meaning of baseline marketing and distribution activities bmd i did not discuss i did not touch upon that I'll discuss what is the meaning of baseline marketing and distribution activities. I'll discuss what all is included in this, within the scope. And then in the third video, we'll discuss the pricing methodology, the, exam, the exemption which I just, just now discussed. Fine. So this was all for today. And hopefully you did gain some insights. So feedbacks are obviously most welcome. And uh, so until next time, keep learning and uh, do subscribe to the channel if you did like this video. Thank you. Namaskar.